I guess I didn't watch too many titles this week. Um, first of all, last week I talked about Lupin the Third uh, Series Two DVD One, which Lupin the th sorry Lupin the Third TV is the the one that's been released here in the U.S. on DVD is the second series and not the first one or the third one. I think I have not verified the third one hasn't been released. I'm just assuming it is given how long the second series is. But basically, that, like I think I mentioned last week, that was in preparation for watching Lupin the Third, The Castle of Cagliostro, which is um, one of Miyazaki's most early movies directing and is also a Lupin the Third movie. And it was actually quite interesting to watch. But I think I would say the part that intrigued me the most is kind of a crash of two worlds. Well, basically... The character design of Lupin and the group around him, they still seem very Lupin-ish, so nothing really struck me at, about them as being particularly oddly designed character-wise or drawn-wise. But when they introduce characters that are unique to the Castle of Cagliostro, specifically like the princess and the people around the kingdom, or rather the castle itself, um, it's really quite interesting because their character designs are very, very, very stereotypical um, designs that we come to expect from Miyazaki now. Of course, that back then they weren't stereotypical, but it's interesting now, after a dozen Studio Ghibli titles, to go back, watch this one from the late 70s, and say, oh, wow, that's a very interesting clash of character designs. It, it almost reminds me a bit of that, um, oh, that, that drug thing they used to show us back in elementary school when we were kids. You know, back then it was like, oh my god, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Muppet Babies, all in one cartoon. The Ghostbusters, woo -hoo. You know, it was like every every cartoon we grew up together with, they, they all were animated in one thing to tell us, don't do drugs, drugs are bad, etc. And anyways, okay, so maybe it wasn't that kind of a crash of um, different realities, so to speak, but it was still a very interesting thing to watch. The content of the movie was actually, um, you know, aside from that, it was really good. You know, a lot of um, Miyazaki stuff just seems to, it, it seems to stand the test of time. And I may have seen this, I may have said this about Lupin the Third um, TV series too as well. But it, it just looks like the, the entire franchise has um, aged well. I, th I think they're pretty entertaining, although I haven't watched more Lupin the Third. Just the movie, which was like the day after I recorded um, having watched the... Um... Anyways, th that's one thing I watched. I don't want to say too much more because, um, you know, that'll spoil it, but it, it was a good movie. Um... I spent most of the week watching um, Allison and Lilia, and let me see, I've probably talked about what it's supposedly about, but having watched all of it, I can now say a little bit better. The basic idea is you have two countries, East and West, that have been fighting, and um, they have a temporary ceasefire when one of the characters from one of them finds out about a treasure hidden in the other that can end the war. And so, um, th this character, she and her friend actually go on an adventure to find this treasure, and it, hearing that, you would almost think that the anime is actually a, an epic adventure sort of a show. I expected that while going into it. But really what it is, it's a it's, um, core group of characters who keep encountering noteworthy um, events sort of show where basically that treasure is just the first story and there's more stories to go on and that may help you um, relax a bit in trying to understand why it's called Allison and Lila Lilia Lilia yeah Lilia. because you know the character who's searching for the treasure is Allison so who's this Lilia character and then you can figure out oh I see. There are another important character that comes in later, because there's a first half and a second half of the series, right? So the basic idea is again, you know, they've got a bunch of separate stories. It's not an episode by episode thing, so it's more like it spans 
three or four episodes, probably. And it's really tricky to say what I thought about it, because there were a lot of interesting things that happened, but something about it made it easy for me to lose attention. I'm not sure if this was just that it's subtitled, and when something's subtitled, I can't do a whole lot of multitasking, and I, and I really need it that bad right now, since a uh, power outage here kind of killed a chunk on the Minecraft server that I need to restore. But, um, it, I don't think it's just that. I, I'm not exactly sure if I can place my finger on it, but sometimes it felt like after an episode that I wanted to take a couple minute break, which sometimes a couple minute break ends up being a couple hour break. And I think that's why I spent the entire week watching it and it just took a long time to do. Because... Now, overall, I, I would say that it was quite entertaining to watch, and I can't think of too much else to say about it other than it's kind of amusing how it almost feels like a story about uh, these characters going places to drink tea or something, because this is one of those... It, it's almost like um, Aria, the animation, the natural, and all of those where it feels like the characters are just very casually going on in their lives, like there might not be a whole lot of relevance to what they're doing in any particular story at that moment. But unlike that, they're like, oh, that's right, we're in the middle of two countries at war, so we're going to throw a little left... a ball out of left field at people who are watching this. I think that's a good way to describe it. But still, before that sort of stuff happening, happens, they're like, oh, we're in this uh, new setting, let's uh, sit down and drink tea, and they don't talk a whole lot, but it's kind of interest amusing, I guess. I wouldn't say interesting, because some people might not find that as interesting. And again, I can't really talk about the things that made it interesting, because uh, that's a whole lot of what made it um, entertaining to watch, is watching things unfold. <sighs> Let's see, and before I talk about the stuff that y'all might have seen in my hand, um, I also watched the first three or four episodes of Corpse Princess, and I guess I'm not quite sure what to think about that. The basic idea is it's about um, corpses that come back to life. It's something different from a zombie. It's more like somebody's regrets leaving the world is powerful enough to keep their body in the world, but it manifests in a way where they eat humans or something like that. So it's less like a zombie and more like, well, pretty much any other monster anime, really, because that, that's just a very common theme. Um, and, you know, our main char we've got two main characters, of course. We can't ever have one. And the the title of character, the corpse princess, is herself one of these uh, um, corpses brought back to life, but she was brought back to life to kill the other ones. The other character is a kid in an orphanage who's trying to move out of it. He, I say kid, you know, he's just a high schooler, or middle schooler, maybe. I think probably a young high schooler, but I could be mistaken. The basic idea is he's trying to move out into his own place, uh, away from the orphanage, and there's a lot of intersection between... Um, what's going on, because the things she's working on are in the same general area he is, and... Well, when I say working on, that might make it sound like it's not an action anime, but I'd say it's pretty primarily an action anime. Uh, oh, we got this new mystery to deal with, and it means another corpse came back to life and is killing people in this new, unique way. So, I don't have much more to say about it, because I have not watched a whole lot more, but... It's intriguing enough. I've been meaning to watch it for a long time, but I probably held off because it felt like something that I could probably watch with friends, but since that hasn't happened for like four or five months or something, no, no point in putting it off. So let's see. The other thing I watched was actually FLCL, but the reason I have all three of these in my hand is because, um, you know, some people may be curious what I think about um, Blu-ray versions of anime. These are the only three I've really explored, and there's High School of the Dead, which I think is probably okay to pick up on um, Blu-ray. Basically, um, 
High School of the Dead is a more recently made thing, which was made for HDTV, so it it shows up really good on a high um, resolution television, big television, whatever. So if it's the kind of thing where you're really into that, you know, the Blu-ray for this one probably makes a lot of sense. If there's a reason it doesn't make sense, well, it's because the DVD is good enough, I guess. I mean, I, I like I looked at them side by side, and I was actually surprised how, um, you know, the Blu-ray you could tell was sh it had sharper lines, but at the same time, it didn't really feel like that uh, did, that took away from or the DVDs lack of sharper lines took away from it. It wasn't that much smaller to make that big of a difference. Now, it's also possible that I was watching something that's 720p instead of 1080p, in which case, um, maybe there wouldn't be that big of a difference. So in the case of High School of the Dead, if you felt an absolute need to update because you're interested in that clear quality, and of course, another thing is that the subtitles, of course, would be different. They're probably... So this was actually a conversation I was having about a different anime, um, but I think on DVD a lot of the hard-coded subtitles are coded in such a way that they should be pretty readable even on a really crappy TV, whereas something released on Blu-ray probably doesn't need that same expectations. We're talking about uh, DVD or TVs that uh, are like, oh, you're playing a Blu-ray player? Then you want some really high-quality content. So the subtitles could probably be smoother, shape better, I think. Uh, now, I should probably go back and check on this, because I haven't done it a whole lot, since I haven't watched a whole lot of Blu-ray content, but I highly suspect that text on the Blu-ray player, I don't think that's hard, I don't think it's an overlay thing like it is on DVDs. I think that might actually be the player itself um, rendering the text, which may mean it can be cleaner and you may actually like something like that. And that would actually be the only reason I, I could think of to go for these older titles. The truth of the matter is, um, looking at Chobits, there, the only no difference I noticed was that the upscaled DVD version did not appear as colorful as the Blu-ray version, but those are coming from two different sources. One's coming from a computer over HDMI, which doesn't seem to be doing a spectacular job of it. And the other is from the um, Blu-ray player. So it's difficult to say if that's necessarily something that's bad about the DVD version versus something they did right here. But for the most part, the problem is that older anime like FLCL and Showbits were designed to be seen on those crappy televisions. So about the only advantage I see of these over those is you know if you've got a good dvd up converter you pretty much don't have to worry about um the blu-rays because the original dvds are good but if you really like to watch the subtitled versions that might actually make a lot of sense the truth of the matter is now i don't know what the normal price was but this was on sale so i uh, you know that that's like oh you know i was thinking i should buy blu-rays and um now there's this big Funimation Blu-ray sale. I, I should pick up some titles. This one was only $2 more expensive than the DVD version. And from that point of view, it's actually not that bad. If, you, if you're going to choose one or the other, you know, maybe the two extra dollars for the Blu-ray makes a lot of sense. I mean, they're, 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 just, they're not priced too unrealistically. I think a lot of that is because they know they're releasing these series on Blu-ray, but they have to appeal to people without saying, oh, and by the way, it's um, $50 for something that already looks like what you already have, but it's on Blu-ray. You know, that that doesn't sound very um, convincing. That, that, that sounds like you're trying to sell snake oil, I guess. So basically, I thought it was good. The, the only interesting thing that playing on the Blu-ray player gives me over playing on the computer and the DVD versions would give me this as well is that I'm not sure what it is but the TV knows that the input from the Blu-ray player can be smoothed out to 240 Hertz so it's really funny watching an anime from the mid 90s and you have a screen scrolling at 240 Hertz it just it does not look right 
but it doesn't look wrong, so it's just kind of funny. And I watched FLCL that way, and it was perfectly fine watchable, although it's also FLCL, a lot of jerky, random, crazy movements. So, I don't know. Should I mention real quickly what these series are about, since I checked all three of them out? Um, high School of the Dead is about a zombie apocalypse and a bunch of high schoolers surviving it. FLCL is about... Chobits is about a um, guy who goes to Tokyo to um, go to a cram school and he discovers a computer that appears to be a really special computer. Now, computers in this show are humanoid in general, so that's not the thing that's special. It's just that there are things about her that are different from other Persicoms, you know, personal computers or whatever. Anyways, the reason I can't think of what to say about FLCL is this shit's just crazy. It's awesome in that way, but people who don't really like random, crazy, head-scratching, how-could-that-even-be sort of stuff. It's, it's just... It'll, it'll probably... Um, you won't know what to expect if you tried to watch it and didn't know what it was. And I don't know if I want to explain it, because that feels like it's spoiling something awesome. Oh, well. Anyways, that's this week's anime analysis, which is going all over, all over the place and interesting, so... I don't know how the Blu-ray stuff's going to fit in there, if I'm going to try and do a Blu-ray versus DVD comparison, because it doesn't seem like it makes much sense. I mean, the High School of the Dead Blu-ray contained the same exact content as the DVD, you know, same special features distributed the episodes differently, but nothing so, um, no, nothing about it that's obviously, oh yes, 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 definitely get the Blu-ray version. It's, if sharpness is what you're interested in, the Blu-ray version makes sense. Or if you prefer the way Blu-ray do subtitling, Blu-ray makes sense. You know. Oh well. Anyways. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to be watching in this coming week since, again, it's all so crazy uh, since I don't have any structure. So we'll just see what happens.